Number 10. P-47 Thunderbolt On July 4, 1944, the career of a P-47 Thunderbolt 41-6538 aircraft came to an end when it crashed into the Shropshire Union Canal. The aircraft had terrible luck, as this wasn't the first time it had crashed, it was actually its fifth time. Lieutenant Dunlap was on a non-operational flight from the American Air Base at, at RAF Ackman, close to Shrewsbury. When the engine failed at 3,000 feet, he attempted to make an emergency landing 20 miles away from the aircraft's destination. Struggling to control the vessel, he undershot the runway and slid across a field and straight into the canal. He even killed two cows during the crash. Though Lieutenant Dunlap was unharmed in the accident, it was believed that the canal is haunted by the pilot. As mentioned before, this aircraft was in five accidents total. Its first accident happened on April 15, 1943, while being flown by Captain Stanley Anderson. Oddly and sadly enough, Anderson was shot down the same day, but in a different aircraft. In March 1944, it ran out of fuel, causing the pilot to crash land at Wellington and Somerset. A few weeks later, it crashed on takeoff at Ackman. Yet again, the aircraft had more repairs done, only to once again participate in another crash, this time into another pilot P-47, flown by a different pilot at Ackman. The P-47 Thunderbolt 416538 was finally laid to rest after it was discovered in the canal. Number 9. Artifact-Filled Milk Cans Imagine going on vacation with your family for relaxation and fun, but instead, it involves international authorities and countless questions. That's what happened to a young boy visiting Lake Jezioric, Poland, with his parents in 2018. He came across two old milk cans buried in the ground, obviously very curious. He opened them to find its contents including various German items such as a Nazi officer's uniform, a pocket watch, coins, important documents, a diary, a coat of arms, even a last will and testament. East Prussia was a German province during World War II, and many of the Germans who lived in the area fled in 1944 and 45, especially as Russia's Red Army advanced. It was clear they were someone's precious belongings, so the boy turned the milk cans over to the authorities. After further investigation, it was discovered that the heirlooms belonged to Prussian aristocrat Count Hans von Fickenstein and his family. Knowing he was about to be sent to a Soviet prison where he would eventually die, the Count sent his family to Pomerania leaving his wife Hildegarda behind. It wouldn't be crazy to believe that Hildegarda buried the cans for her late husband, leaving them in the ground for over 70 years. Most of the personal items were given to the Count's daughter, who was 81 years old and lives in Germany. Some of the historical documents, including the coins and banknotes, now belong to Poland's state treasury and will be put on display in a local museum. Number 8. Love Letters Violence isn't the only thing that went down during World War II. Some people still managed to find time for some romance. This was certainly the case for a mystery woman and a soldier staying at the Esplanade Hotel in Scarborough, England, where a trove of love letters was discovered in February 2021. The Esplanade famously housed soldiers during the war, where they stayed during training and wartime. The letters mostly contained details about the days that were humdrum, giving details about their daily lives, from telling their woes about tooth pain to declaring their undying love for each other. The mystery woman wrote, You are always in my thoughts, day and night. And she continued with, Wherever you go, my darling, don't ever forget, I love you more than anything else on earth. To which the soldier responded with, Oh darling, I am so lonely without you. Though there's no confirmation of who the love letters belong to, Shack representative Marie Woods claimed there was a lead to a man by the name of John, who was unfortunately killed in a plane crash in 1943 at the age of 19. The woman, however, did write a return address on one of her letters, which was traced back to a couple whose names were James and Jesse McConnell, parents of the young man. The letter showed the raw emotions of two individuals who were experiencing harsh times during the war. The findings are significant proof that love flourishes, even in the darkest of times. Number 7. The Tulsa American in 1944, the last American B-24 Liberator bomber, known as the Tulsa American, and built at the Douglas Aircraft Company in Tulsa, Oklahoma, crashed into the Adriatic Sea, taking dozens of relics with it. Until recently, the aircraft remained undiscovered for over 70 years. As luck would have it, the plane was damaged during a battle with the German Air Force over Poland and went down after trying and failing to make an emergency landing. Most of the airmen involved in the accident were saved by locals but three met their demise. In 2012, divers first located the wreck near the small Croatian island of Vis, 
Researchers examined the area where the Tulsa American was resting in two large pieces, about 135 feet below the surface. In an effort to bring home the remains of those missing airmen, more than seven decades later, underwater archaeologists completed a mission to the sunken World War II aircraft to recover any lost artifacts. They collected possible human remains, as well as military equipment and other items, such as boots and a life vest. Archaeologist Brendan Foley told Smithsonian Magazine that the nose of the plane looked like a peeling banana. It was tragic proof of the plane's violent end. The remains of the men who were found were unidentified at the time of the discovery and had yet to be tested. Once they were tested and the identities are revealed, the remains will be buried and the Tulsa American puzzle will be complete. Number 6. Nazi Art Hall In 2012, an amazing treasure trove of art with hundreds of millions of dollars was found behind rotting cans of food in a Munich apartment. The art had been stolen by the Nazis in World War II and hidden for a rainy day in Pretty Penny. It's believed that about 1,500 works of art by master painters such as Picasso, Matisse, Renoir, and Chagall were lost in the bombing of Dresden in 1945. But in reality, the paintings had been taken from their owners by the Nazis, who considered the works as degenerate. Alarms were raised about the existence of artwork when Cornelius Gerlitt was returning home by train from Switzerland. Customs agents became suspicious when they discovered he had $10,200 in cash on his person. Cornelius, who could never keep a job down and had no real source of income, had no business having this much money in his pocket. The find prompted a thorough investigation that ended with his apartment being searched. Hildebrand Gerlitt, Cornelius' father, was the art dealer in charge of collecting the art from the Nazis. When Hildebrand died, he passed the paintings on to his son. Cornelius then sold them one by one for money to live on. The art has since been seized and authorities are hoping to reunite them with their rightful owners and their families. Number 5. Magnet Fishing Discoveries Magnet fishing is the new metal detecting, and as its popularity grows, so does the ever-expanding list of fascinating objects that people find. Earlier this year, pro-magnet fisherman Nigel Lamford made a major discovery. During his 10-hour long fishing trip, he threw his magnet out into a canal in Northamptonshire, England, and hoped for the best. What came next was a mysterious, grime-covered jumble of objects. He first pulled out a magazine, then a gun, followed by the stock. Repeating this routine, he found six submachine guns in total. Nigel and his buddies eagerly assembled the submachine gun and proudly posed with their latest and most exciting find. Not that they haven't found anything before, but according to Nigel, a find like this is the best find ever in my opinion. Other than finding a gun in near perfect condition, Nigel had also found artillery shelves, knives, grenades, and flintlock muskets, all dating back to the 18th century. Because weapons are not allowed in the UK, Nigel sends the majority of his finds to the authorities to be disposed of properly, or to local museums to be cleaned up. Have you ever been magnet fishing? If you have, tell us about your experience. If you haven't, would you like to? Let us know in the comments and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Number four, Secret Diary. According to a secret diary belonging to an SS officer under the alias Michaelis, there could be billions of dollars worth of treasure buried in a 200 foot deep well underneath the 16th century Hochberg Palace in the Polish village of Rostoka. He left detailed passages on how Heinrich Himmler, his Nazi commander, plan to hide stolen European treasures, hence their placement in the ever so deep and secret palace well. Mikolas went on to say that the well holds over 30 tons of gold from the Reichsbank in a Polish town, which is today known as Wrocław. The diary listed 11 different sites where Nazis concealed looted gold, jewels, religious objects, and priceless paintings. The diary flew under the radar for several decades due to its content and was protected heavily by a Masonic lodge in Germany, whose membership included former Nazi officers. The organization gifted the diary to a Polish foundation named the Selzian Bridge in 2019 as an apology for Germans' actions during the war. A representative for the lodge in Selzian Bridge has stated that there was documents claiming the Nazis murdered anyone who witnessed their looting, threw the dead bodies down the well, and sealed the entrance with explosives. The diary's authenticity has yet to be confirmed. Number 3. Valley of Death Massacre Much like anyone who commits a crime, 
The devious goal is to get away with it and hide the evidence. And that's exactly what the Nazis did when it dawned on them that they were on the losing end of World War II. Instead of releasing their prisoners, they shot and burned them and buried them in a mass grave after forcefully marching their captives into the woods in northern Poland. The fire lasted for three days and three nights. And from that dreadful night on January 14, 1945, the grave would remain undiscovered for 75 years. Recently, near the village of Hoynice, archaeologists have unearthed relics that show disturbing proof that a massacre had occurred. In the findings during the excavations were bullet casings, burnt human bones, cigarette lighters, and even jewelry. Though many massacres happened during this time, investigations were not allowed due to the nature of Jewish beliefs, which states that once a human body has been buried, it stays in the ground and cannot be disturbed. Dozens of Jewish families, priests, and disabled people were amongst the people that were murdered in the Valley of Death, the nickname the area received after its discovery. With optimism, DNA tests were performed to identify the victims, or at the very least, find any surviving relatives. With such a high death count, it's almost impossible to identify everyone, but with every identification comes a little closure and a proper burial, so those who are interested in the project do their best to deliver. Number 2. Mystery Box A Texas family was vacationing on Port Arkansas Beach in Texas earlier this year when they stumbled upon something bizarre. They thought it was a rock, until they realized just how large and smelly it was. The discovery attracted a lot of attention, and a crowd started forming around the strange object. One family member posted photos on TikTok, so even the internet was in on the excitement. What was it, though? The mother of the family stated it looked like it had skin on it, while another person stated maybe it was something simple like a lost Amazon package. It appeared to have layers and layers of a stretchy tan-colored material wrapped around it, similar to a wet cardboard box. There were clams, barnacles, and algae clinging to it as well. After some poking and prodding, they finally decided to slice the thing open. It turned out to be a rubber bale that was known to be carried by German warships during the World War II era. A German blockade runner known as the SS Rio Grande was carrying tin, copper, rubber bales, and cobalt when she was spotted by the USS Omaha and the USS Jewett off the coast of Brazil. Realizing they'd been spotted, the Rio Grande's crew abandoned the ship and tried to scuttle it, but the American vessels fired at the ship until it sank, sending it and its remains to the bottom of the ocean. Even though it wasn't a lost treasure, it did hold some historical value, and the family was excited to have found it. Number 1. Missing Airmen's Remains The motto, we never leave anyone behind, used by the military, rings true after a missing airman's remains were found in a rice field in Thailand and was sent home after a quaint ceremony at an airbase in eastern Thailand. In attendance were military personnel along with both American and Thai officials at the Utapau Naval Air Base. With great respect, the casket was draped with the American flag and the airman was sent on his way home via a C-17 transport plane. You know, it's keeping the promise that we never leave a person behind. Marine Colonel Matt Brannan, head of the Indo-Pacific DPAA, told CBS News. He went on to say, We owe it to the families to find answers and to bring these people home. Great tragedy struck Thailand when massive floods swept the country in 2011. Thailand's Air Force Museum in Bangkok was no exception to the damage. There was great concern its archives were lost or damaged, so retired Thai Air Chief Marshal Sankhanip Pramthep searched endlessly for files, as he is an avid World War II fan. If and when he found archives, he'd go through each and every one of them. With determination and hard work, success arises. Sakhanep was doing his usual searching when he came across an old moldy folder containing information on the plane where the missing airman was allegedly on. Over 1,340 service members had been accounted for, according to the DPAA. A handful of American military pilots that disappeared are still missing to this very day, and as each day passes, the chance of finding them are all but slim. Rest assured, if they are discovered, they will receive the proper care that they deserve. Number 11. Soviet Tank Graveyard
During the Cold War arms race between the United States and the Soviet Union, the USSR began producing the BDRM-2 armored vehicle in the city of Nizhny Novgorod. More than 7,000 of these tank-like vehicles were built between 1962 and 1989, many of which were exported to other countries and are still in use today. The Soviet Union also manufactured an eight-wheeled personnel carrier called the BTR-70 that still remains in use by the Russian Marine Corps and some other militaries to this day. In 2018, curious urban explorer Dan Stalk posted a shocking video of a vehicle graveyard filled with BDRM-2s and BTR-70s. He didn't reveal the site's exact location, and the translated subtitles about the property are confusing at best. But it's clear, based on the footage, that somewhere in Eastern Europe there's a collection of Soviet military vehicles that were simply left behind for one reason or another. Number 10. Secret Object Number 6 there's a mysterious semicircular structure along the coast of Peter the Great Bay in Russia's Primorye region. Its official name is the Submarine Shelter Pavlovskoy, but to the Soviets who built it, it was simply called Secret Object No. 6. Because the site was kept top secret, it's unclear when exactly construction began. Experts believe that it was probably built sometime during the 1960s and that it functioned as a submarine shelter that was designed to withstand a nuclear attack. The site consists of a three-story network of tunnels built into a cliff rock. In the event of an emergency, submarines would enter through a 1,608-foot tunnel with six-foot-thick concrete walls. Living and working spaces were located within another tunnel. As the Soviet Union ran out of money during the late 1980s, construction on the site ground to a halt, and it was never finished being built. Operations ceased in 1991 when the U.S. and the Soviet Union entered the first of a series of agreements that required the USSR to stop building underground maritime structures. Known as START-1, the treaty also required the Soviets to seal off the entrances to some of their bases. Just four months after the agreement went into effect, the Soviet Union collapsed and the base was abandoned. Many of its tunnels remain sealed today, and visitors aren't allowed due to the area's high radiation count. Number 9. Vent Hill Farm Station In Warrington, Virginia, there's a Cold War museum that boasts an impressive collection of artifacts. It's located within a decommissioned communications base known as the Vent Hill Farm Station. Built during World War II, the site originally functioned as a cryptography school and a refitting station for signal units returning to the U.S. before being redeployed overseas. During the Cold War, the Army and the National Security Agency used the base for intercepting Soviet military and diplomatic correspondence and for other signals and electronic warfare intelligence. Due to its top-secret nature, it's unclear exactly what went on there, but experts have theorized that the facility's surveillance targets included foreign embassies in Washington, D.C. The base was decommissioned in 1993 as a cost-saving measure, and its personnel were all relocated elsewhere. It closed for good in 1997 and became the property of the Virginia State Vent Hill Farms Economic Development Authority two years later. Some of the buildings house engineering and technology companies, dance and gymnastics schools, a winery, a brewery, and the FAA's Air Traffic Control System Command Center. The Cold War Museum is located within a two-story building that was used for storing supplies when the base was in operation. It opened in 2011 and welcomes visitors on the weekends. Number 8. North Concord Air Force Base Located in East Mountain, Vermont, the North Concord Air Force Base opened in 1956 as a radar base for monitoring early signs of a nuclear attack. Situated on a mountain in one of the most remote places in the state, the location was perfect for a military facility that wanted its existence to be kept as quiet as possible. The 174 service members who operated the base lived slightly lower on the mountain in a neighborhood of tin and steel huts called Quonset Village. They worked around the clock to guard the station from potential intruders and protected the radar towers with inflatable white domes that sat on top of the structures. In 1962, the base's name was changed to the Lindenville Air Force Station. Just a year later, the government shut it down because it got too expensive to run, especially because technology was advancing rapidly and rendering the station's equipment obsolete. An alleged UFO sighting happened near the station in 1961. A local couple named Betty and Barney Hill later claimed that they were abducted by aliens just a few hours later. While their claims have never been proven, nobody's been able to explain what the personnel at the base saw that night. The ruins of the abandoned base remain at the site today, but it's dangerous to explore due to its deteriorating state. During the 90s, someone even fell to their death while investigating an old tower on the property. There are numerous local legends about the site, including stories about suspicious characters lurking around the base, hauntings, and of course, aliens. Would you like to visit this abandoned Air Force base? Tell us in the comments below and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Number 7. Irbeen 
Named after the nearby Erb River, Erbin was a secret Soviet town located in what's now Latvia. Most of the people who lived there were scientists, military personnel, and workers who were employed at a nearby Soviet radio astronomy center known as Zvegznit. Neither of these places appeared on any map, and the latter was used for intercepting NATO communications throughout the Cold War. The astronomy center originally consisted of three large radio telescopes, including two that were linked by a tunnel and a communications base. One of the telescopes, known as RT-32, was among the world's top five most powerful telescopes at the time. Operations began around 1967. By then, local residents and nearby villages had been relocated elsewhere, and the area became inaccessible to most people. The clandestine site remained a secret for decades to come as it remained staffed exclusively with personnel directly from Moscow. In 1993, two years after Russia recognized the region's independence, the Soviet military finally left Erbin. Two of the telescopes were rendered unusable, and the third was dismantled. Visible remnants of Erbin were left behind in the form of a part buildings and other structures, which were in perfectly good working condition when they were abandoned. But time has taken its toll on the deserted village, which has also been damaged by looters and scavengers who have more or less gutted it of anything of resale value. Anyone who manages to reach the remote wooded site is free to explore it as they please. Number 6. Cold War Relics in the Caribbean Outside of Cuba, signs of a former Soviet presence are extremely rare throughout the Caribbean. One unique exception can be found outside Pearls Airport in Grenada, which sits along the island's northeastern coast. It hasn't been used for commercial air service in many years and mostly functions as grazing land for farm animals. Back in the early 80s, the Soviet Union provided aid to Grenada for the construction of the Maurice Bishop International Airport, which is the island's current airport. Supplies and personnel were ferried from Cuba into Pearls, where a number of abandoned aircraft from the era remain to this day. The site is is home to an old Cubana Airlines plane as well as a Soviet crop duster. Both planes were damaged when the U.S. invaded Grenada in 1983 upon hearing about its Soviet ties. They've been there ever since. Visitors can walk right onto the site and explore inside the aircraft, but are cautioned to be mindful of the cow and goat waste that they're likely to encounter at the site and to be sensitive to locals' thoughts and memories of the invasion, which have left emotional wounds for some. Number 5. SFRY Submarine Tunnels on the remote Croatian island of Vis in the Adriatic Sea, there's a series of dark, eerie submarine tunnels dating back to World War II. Recognizing the island's strategic importance for fighting the Nazis, Yugoslav leader Josip Broz Tito implemented numerous military installations throughout the island. Included among them was the sprawling 12-mile network of underground tunnels. Known as the SFRY tunnels, the complex functioned as a submarine base and also contained housing for those who ran it. After World War II, Vis became the Yugoslavian military's central base. It remained an important site for a 50-year period of communism, during which time the tunnels occasionally served as a hiding spot for the military. The island's 3,600 civilian residents were watched closely, and their movement was severely restricted. They were banned from going places that they once freely enjoyed. The base at Vis was abruptly abandoned when Croatia gained its independence in 1991. This came as great news to locals, who not only regained their freedom of movement, but had long been campaigning to open the island up to tourists. Since then, civilians have repurposed some of the deserted military structures into wine cellars and for other uses, but many remain abandoned. Number 4. Cezanne Island Submarine Base Located in the Mediterranean Sea off Albania's southern coast, Cezanne is the country's largest island. It's home to a Cold War-era Soviet base along with an extensive network of underground tunnels that once housed a weapons factory. It was built to withstand a nuclear attack and was stocked with food, water, and other emergency provisions. The base is technically still operational and contains beds, kitchen items, and other necessities that someone might need if they plan to stay for a long time. But the site is manned by just two soldiers and is abandoned for the most part. Today, the site functions as a naval base that monitors pirating and smuggling activities between Italy and Albania. In addition to the military base, Cezanne Island is known for its unique wildlife, including species that aren't seen on the European mainland. Since 2015, the Albanian government has opened the island to visitors several times. But there's no electricity or drinking water, so overnight excursions probably won't be offered anytime soon. And the future of Cezanne Island remains unclear for now. Number 3. Lina Hall there's a large abandoned arena that sits along the harbor in the Estonian capital of Tallinn. Known as Lina Hall, it was built in anticipation of the 1980 Summer Olympics. The games were held in Moscow, but the city had no place to hold the sailing event, which was instead held in Tallinn. At the time, Estonia was part of the Soviet Union. Despite its imposing size, Lina Hall does not dominate the landscape. It was purposely designed not to obstruct the view of the medieval city center, so it sits low and is accessible via multiple descending staircases. After the Olympics, it hosted concerts and housed an ice 
ice skating rink. Over the years, the building fell into decay, and in 2009, the skating rink closed. The concert hall shuttered its doors the following year. Determined to preserve the disused historic structure, city authorities searched far and wide for someone to invest in Lena Hall. But they failed to find a financial backer and decided to renovate the building themselves in 2015. Progress has been slow going, and the future of the abandoned venue remains uncertain. Lena Hall is closed to the public, but remains visible from the outside. Since its closure, it's become covered in graffiti and surrounded by overgrowth, which has made its way through the cracking concrete walkways. Number 2. Born Solonowo Located in northwestern Poland, the town of Born Solonowo functioned as a secret Soviet military base from 1945 to 1992. During that time, it did not appear on any map, and it wasn't until the Soviet Union's collapse that it was transferred to the Polish government's control. But the village's roots date much farther back than World War II. Its history can be traced back to the 16th century when just a handful of people inhabited the area. After the war ended, the Soviet Red Army took over jurisdiction of an area encompassing the town and two military bases. Born Solonowo came to be one of the largest military camps among the faction of the USSR's troops stationed throughout Poland. It managed to remain a secret for nearly 50 years until the Polish government reached an agreement for the Red Army's withdrawal following the collapse of communism. After the last of the soldiers left in 1992, Born Solonowo officially became a civilian town. The following year it was open to the public. Most of the people who first moved there were Polish repatriates who had been forcibly resettled in Siberia and Kazakhstan half a century earlier. And while an estimated 5,000 people lived there today, several of the former buildings that were used for military purposes remain abandoned and derelict, serving as an eerie reminder of the Soviet era. Number 1. Olavsfern during the Cold War, the Norwegian government established a top-secret naval base north of the Arctic Circle known as Olavsfern. Built into a mountainside near the city of Tromsø, the structure was massive and secure with a 3,000-foot tunnel leading to the entrance. The facility contained housing, workshops, offices, ammunition depots, and a dry dock with enough room to store six submarines. There were also several dry docks that could store larger ships. From 1967 until 2002, the complex functioned as a Norwegian Royal Navy base. After losing its official military designation, it remained in operation until 2009 when it was closed down for good following the restructuring of the Norwegian Navy. For some time after that, Russian entities with connections to a state-owned company rented out the site. Experts became concerned that the Russians were carrying out secret military operations there, so in 2019 a Norwegian company with a reputation for cooperating with the government became the major shareholder of the property. It put an end to whatever the Russians were doing there and the site went back into use last year. It's currently being used by military units from Norway's allied countries including the Dutch Marines. Number 9. The Badger Known officially as the Badger Hemp 2182, the Badger is a futuristic self-driving military cargo truck. In the spring of 2019, Gurmukh Bazin introduced his design to his graphics class. Though it isn't anywhere near production, it still gives some insight into what technological advances our military is capable of. It's just a matter of making it a reality. At this moment, the Badger is just a visual project, but there is some of its intended functionality to go on. First things first, it needed to be huge. It's an army vehicle after all. But with the ever-changing ways of the world, the Badger's designer was seeking to represent AI-driven warfare, which already exists within the military. Its interior is walled with mainly screens and computers, making the outside non-visible to the driver. But not to worry, the driver is an animated human, letting artificial intelligence do all the work. The exterior represents a cargo truck with 18 sturdy wheels and plenty of space for storage and to carry what is needed to the front lines. When looking at the Badger, it's worth noting that it appears to be an electric vehicle. Looking behind the cab on the driver's side, a stack of batteries can be seen. It would be the most logical explanation because the vehicle is AI. However, it can't be confirmed. Number 8. A-10 Thunderbolt II Warthog the A-10 Thunderbolt II was created by the Fairchild Republic for the United States Air Force. It was nicknamed Warthog for its rugged looks. Some were even known to have sharp teeth painted near the tip of the aircraft's nose. Its first flight was on May 10, 1972. The Warthog is a twin-engine jet subsonic aircraft and is the only U.S. Air Force aircraft that was designed solely for close air support to ground forces. Its ailerons are larger than most other aircraft, which results in the Warthog being capable of maneuvering at low speeds and altitudes. The Warthog comes equipped with an intimidating 30mm GAU-8 Avenger Gatling nose gun. It makes up to 16% of the aircraft's weight. It was made to fire incendiary rounds that were highly explosive and depleted uranium ammo that was designed to pierce through body armor and can fire the ammo up to 3,900 rounds per minute. 
The aircraft can take hits from explosives and armor-piercing ammo that measure up to 23 millimeters. It was built to stay in combat zones for a long period of time, as well as work in low ceiling and visibility conditions. Pilots are also protected by a 1,200-pound titanium armor bathtub, which in turn keeps the flight control system safe. And for added protection, many of the A-10 models have a false canopy painted on their belly. This confuses enemies about the actual altitude of the aircraft. The Warthog is also able to fly with one engine. It is built with two, one tail and half of one wing missing. This machine was truly made to last. With over 8,000 A-10s going to combat, a mere five were destroyed. 20 of those had moderate damage from battle, and only 45 came back with damages that had to be repaired. Number 7. The Landing Aircraft Cushion As an over-the-beach transport vessel, the Landing Aircraft Cushion LCAC can carry a 60-75 to 75 ton payload. It can transport weapon systems, equipment, and personnel from ship to shore, and LCAC has many advantages. High speeds enable them to carry heavy payloads like an M1 tank. LCAC can deliver more forces in a shorter time, requiring fewer trips. In contrast to conventional landing aircraft, this vehicle can reach more than 70% of the world's coastline with its air cushion. The LCAC was designed in response to the need for a landing craft that transported artillery, troops, combat vehicles, tanks, and other combat support equipment across beaches. LCAC operates in waters of any depth without regard to underwater obstacles, shallows, or adverse tides. With its air cushion, it can move inland over obstacles of up to four feet, regardless of topography or terrain. Wet snow, ice-covered shorelines, mud flats, dunes, ditches, marshlands, and riverbanks all show this nature. Disembarking equipment such as trucks and track vehicles can be sped up by ramps located forward and aft. LCAC is a breakthrough in amphibious warfare technology. By using this system, amphibious assaults can be launched from over the horizon, minimizing risks to ship and personnel while making it more difficult for the enemy to predict an assault's location and timing. This maximizes its chances of success. Another significant point to note about LCAC is that its propulsion system makes it less susceptible to mines than other assault craft and vehicles. It can launch an undisclosed over-the-horizon assault up to 50 miles offshore. In addition with its high speed, it's used with helicopters to deliver personnel and equipment beyond the beach to safe landing areas. The LCAC program has now produced 91 units. LCAC-91 was the last craft delivered to the United States Navy in 2001. Number 6. Marauder The Marauder, also known as the Gentle Giant, is primarily used for keeping the peace and its occupants safe. Despite that, it still comes equipped with the most modern features an Army Recon can ask for. It debuted in 2007 and was made by the South African Paramount Group. Their interests lie in global defense and peacekeeping, but can still pack a powerful punch when necessary. The Marauder is armored and mine protected and was said to survive a detonation of 155mm high explosive air bust, making it nearly indestructible. It can be fitted with medium to light caliber machine guns, missile launchers, cannons, and even mortar firing devices. It's been made with a six-cylinder turbo diesel engine and has a semi-automatic transmission. And with a 15-ton weight, it's best to get out of the way when it's coming toward you going at its max speed of 74 miles per hour. With bulletproof windows, occupants can see what's outside and guard themselves against stray strafing, complete with firing ports. Additionally, the seats inside the Marauder are anti-blast to prevent bombs and rockets from jostling the occupant's membranes and internal organs. When an IED jammer is used, it can prevent enemy attacks before they even start. There's no question that it's capable of taking on most terrains, whether it's water, sand, or rocks, and does so at an impressively fast pace, keeping the occupants comfortable in the process. Marauders just can't be stopped. Number 5. M1 Assault Breacher Vehicle, the Shredder Equipped with a mine plow and line charges, the M1 Assault Breacher Vehicle, also known as the Shredder, is a U.S. military mine and explosives clearing vehicle. It tracked combat vehicles and cleared pathways for troops and their vehicles along with roadside bombs and through minefields. It's based on the M1 Abrams, weighs 72 tons, and is 40 feet long. It's mounted with a 50 caliber machine gun and a 15-foot-wide snowplow, mounted on metallic skis that glide on the dirt, and loaded with nearly 7,000 pounds of explosives. To prevent troops and vehicles from being injured by hidden bombs, the breachers use Linear Demolition Charge System LDCS, rockets carrying C4 explosives that are launched up to 100 yards forward, detonating hidden bombs at a safe distance. The Grizzly program was cancelled in 2001, and the prototype developed never made it to the production lines. Do you think the US military will reopen the Grizzly program? Let us know in the comments below and hit subscribe while you're at it. Number 4. M1A1 Abrams 
the M1A1 Abrams is the backbone of the armored forces of the United States military. It's the namesake of the late Creighton W. Abrams, former Army Chief of Staff and commander of the 37th Armored Battalion. It first came into service in 1980 and has become a staple of the U.S. ground forces. It's done everything from being a Cold War-era blunt instrument to a tactical modern weapon. The U.S. isn't the only country to use the M1A1. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and Australia all use it as their main battle tank. It's a full-tracked, low-profile land combat assault weapon. Weighing in at 68 short tons, it's one of the heaviest tanks in the service to date. Unlike its Soviet-made counterparts, it can reach more than 40 miles per hour with a stunning zero-turn radius. It's packed with impressive features such as a multi-fuel 1500 horsepower turbine engine, Chobham composite armor, a computerized fire control system, and separate ammunition storage. It flaunts a 122mm M256 smooth bore cannon that fires two types of rounds, Sabot and Heat. The M1 Abrams saw its first fight during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. They were proven highly effective during battle, causing the enemy a devastating tank loss. The U.S. lost nine tanks, seven were to friendly fire, and two were destroyed intentionally to avoid capture. As of today, it remains the main tank on the battlefield in the U.S., making it one of the most successful tanks of all time. Number 3. The F-6F Hellcat The F-6F Hellcat was designed to replace the 4F-4 Wildcat. The cat with claws, each of its wings is mounted with .5 Browning machine guns on them. These guns are capable of 450 rounds per minute. There were also six high-velocity aircraft rockets of 127 millimeters and two of 298 millimeters, six 910 kilogram bombs and torpedoes, as well as some underwing bombs on this aircraft. The Hellcat was mainly featured during the Pacific Theater of Operations during World War II. It's estimated that its maker, the Grumman Aircraft Engineer Corps, produced over 12,000 during the war. That's a shocking rate of one aircraft per hour. The Hellcat first saw combat in 1943 and was responsible for taking down over 5,000 enemy aircraft, making it not only the most lethal fighter in the American fleet, but the toughest amongst Allied aircraft as well. Only 270 Hellcats were lost as a result of combat action. That's pretty impressive if you think about the 5,163 aircraft that were taken down. The aircraft was specially designed to perform carrier landings, as its low speed and stability allowed it to land on high seas without losing aircraft. The Hellcat is truly a one-of-a-kind and can be spotted anywhere. It was painted blue and made to blend in with the Pacific Ocean, where it flew the most. Its wings were the largest of any fighter during World War II, which meant its wings could be folded away for aircraft carrier storage. As far as air-based fighters are concerned, the Hellcat was arguably the most successful aircraft produced by the United States. Even though Hellcats didn't arrive until over a year and a half into World War II, they made up to 75% of U.S. Navy pilots' kills. They destroyed more than 19 enemy aircraft for every Hellcat lost. Number 2. Humvee Humvee is the most popular and currently most used vehicle by the U.S. military. Production started in 1985 and over 280,000 units were built. Its production has since stopped due to new modern vehicles that can provide better defense and attack. It has a V8 engine giving it 150 horsepower and a top speed of 70 miles per hour. It can perform in a variety of terrains such as deserts and jungles and for however long it takes. It's made to carry its occupants and cargo safely, even if that means dodging bullets, bombs and mines. The different configurations all have 44 interchangeable parts, the same transmission and the same engine, so any mechanic working on it shouldn't have a hard time. It first saw combat in 1989 during the U.S. invasion of Panama. It was not a frontline vehicle. It was designed for personnel and light cargo transport behind the front lines. It has no protection or armor from radiological, chemical, or nuclear threats. In light of that, however, losses were not high. With the rise of asymmetric warfare, the HMMWV was pushed into service in urban combat roles for which it is not intended. The military eventually recognized the need to equip the Humvee with protection, resulting in the development of the M1114, a newer Humvee model made to withstand small arms fire. Despite being invaluable, Humvees were sent to Afghanistan after the 9-11 attacks. In the first four months of 2006, 67 U.S. troops and Humvees died. Following this, the U.S. military added armor kits to the trucks. Though it did help with survivability, the extra weight on the chassis deemed the Humvee unreliable, and in 2012, the U.S. Army deemed the Humvee no longer feasible for combat. The Humvee is the vehicular backbone of U.S. forces around the world. Over 10,000 Humvees were employed by coalition forces during the Iraq War. Number 1. Gerald R. Ford The USS Gerald R. Ford was named after the 38th President of the United States, and she's the lead ship of her class of the United States Navy aircraft carriers. 
It's the first new design for an aircraft carrier since the USS Nimitz. For more than 40 years, the USS Nimitz has done its job by playing the role of the first responder in crises and conflicts and has served the nation well. However, Ford-class ships plan to deliver greater survivability and lethality, along with unmatched versatility and compatibility. It is capable of carrying the U.S. Navy's most advanced and impressive aircraft such as the F-35C Lightning II and the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye. On September 10, 2008, a $5.1 billion contract was signed between the U.S. Navy and Northrop Grumman Shipbuilding in Newport News, Virginia. By 2018, the budget reached $13.27 billion, making history as the most expensive warship ever built. The Gerald R. Ford is currently in active service and measuring an amazing 1,105 feet long. Its flight deck is 256 feet wide and has an electromagnetic aircraft launch system in addition to advanced arresting gear. Thanks for watching. Which one of these military vehicles was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.